Yeah, welcome back to the Sports Rank Zone, to the world of tennis, Rico. Men's singles world number one, Yannick Sinner, has avoided a suspension from the sport despite twice testing positive for the banned anabolic steroid Clostebol at the BNP Paribas Open in March. The case only became public earlier this week when the 23-year-old was cleared by an independent tribunal who ruled that he bore no fault or negligence. Now, Clostebol is banned on the Section S1 of the World Anti-Doping Agency Water Prohibited List. And when a player returns an adverse analytical finding, a provisional suspension is automatically applied, as was the case with the Italian star. However, Sinner's legal team managed to successfully appeal the provisional suspension issued by the International Tennis Integrity Agency, ITIA, and was able to continue to compete. Sinner explained that the explained to the ITIA that his adverse analytical findings were caused by skin to skin contact with his physiotherapist who was using an over the counter spray containing the banned substance to treat a small wound. ITIA accepted Sinner's explanation but also referred the case to an independent tribunal which also determined Sinner's explanation to be genuine and applied a finding of no fault or negligence. ITIA's decision is subject to appeal by WADA and the Italian Anti-Doping Agency. Now, sports medicine expert and a former doping control officer for the Jamaica Anti-Doping Commission, Dr. Paul Wright has been following this story, and uh, he joins us now via phone. Dr. Paul Wright, it's great to have you on the show as usual. Right off the bat, how does this story grab you? Very disappointing. And if you put this in the same slot as what are admitting that they knew for years that American athletes were taking bad substances and were allowed to compete. You can see that there is a big shift in how we look at athletics and sport with the use of bad substances. Yeah, why is this so disappointing to you? What aspects of the case um, do you think, I mean, are so disappointing? Number, number one, uh, he tested positive in March for a banned substance, which is an anabolic steroid. Anabolic steroids enhance performance. Uh, it makes you stronger, it makes you quicker, and it makes you quick, easier to respond to injuries, to get better from injuries. Okay. That is in competition. Eight days later, he tested positive again. Now, what we don't know is what happened in the hearing. What we want you to know is was the level of the drug found in competition the same or greater as the level found out of competition? Because that would indicate if this person has been using the drug on a regular basis. The explanation that a muscular therapist was using the drug on a cut on his finger and yet massaging an elite athlete with his hands without gloves, that would suggest to me that the cut was healed. Now, the skin is a barrier. We have to accept that. The skin is a barrier. It stops things from going through the skin into the body. You have to prepare the skin in order to get things to penetrate that barrier. So he is massaging with a wound that is apparently healed. Because I don't know any masseur who massage people with a cut, an open cut anyway. And he says that is how he tested positive. So the drug apparently entered through skin, unbroken skin. We don't know if Mr. Skinner had, uh, had any beams or anything like that. Just a massage of muscle. That's what he massaged. He massaged muscle through the skin. So he's saying that this thing got through an open wound and a muscular finger into his non-open wound and his body where his, his muscles are, entered his system and tested positive day, days later after the first one and the second one. Now that must be to me, that is a large amount of drug that must have got in the substance because these substances don't stay there forever. They have a depletion rate and it tested positive eight days later. So the independent tribunal accepted this and let him off without any sanction whatsoever. And I want to remind uh, everybody uh, here, Ricardo and the listeners, that a this 
baseball player. I think his name was Fernando Tatis in Major League Baseball, which has a much more open affair. Uh, look at how they use drugs. They, they have a different drug pass, uh, policy. But they suspended that player for the exact same drug because that drug is a performance enhancer. So now this man now tested positive in, in March. Argument was on the 15th of August, and by Monday he's playing and winning again, and now eligible to play in the U.S. Open. I believe, that is my belief, not knowing what the level of the drug unit possible, that this man is playing with an unfair advantage over the other players, and that, to me, explains his victories. Yeah, you know, Dr. Wright, I, I look at the statement coming from the ITIA, and they describe the levels found in Sinner's sample as low. Does that help any at all? It does help, but how low is low on the day he tested positive in competition and the day he tested positive eight days later? Because we all know, everybody in who was in drugs know that these drugs deteriorated time. So if he was level one and, and, and in competition and level two eight days later, something, you know, something, as we say in St. Thomas. If, however, he is level one and then level 0 0.5, you could say that Whoever the drug tester was, the drug tester was concerned that this man seemed to be doing something that gave them a, a permission, an opportunity to drug test this person to say exactly is he playing with a level playing field on the same level as everybody else he's competing with. Because we must remember you know, that drug testers go out of competition tests when they suspect something is going on. That is when they do out of competition tests. And usually, out of competition tests can be done in the window of opportunity that you give every day, every 24 hours, you give a one hour window. But if the drug tester turns up out of that one, one hour window and he sees you and tells you that he wants a sample, you are duty bound to get that sample or you're going to be deemed to be missing a test which can go against you in the long term. So we have to believe that the drug tester was apprehensive while he's doing all these amount of tests. He tested positive twice, and we hear this thing about a drug used by a masseuse to an open cut, massaging an athlete without a cut through muscle and skin, getting into his system and testing positive eight days after competition. That makes absolutely no sense to me. Yeah, and, and let me just be clear as to what you're saying. Are you saying that it is unlikely um, or, from your experience, impossible that the, the, the drug could get into his system um, from his masseuse open wound to a non-open wound on the player sinner? It is possible. There is, there is nothing that is possible. It can happen. But the opportunity of it going from an open cut, ever, I'm sure that you guys have had massage already from people. Can you live? You're looking at your massage with an open cut and he's massaging your side? Mm -hmm. that, that, that makes no sense to me, but apparently that can happen and it can go through because that person could have been massaged so tight or so harshly that he created an abrasion and that is how the drug could move from a cut into his body because going through close skin which is a barrier. We must remember, you know, skin has three layers, you know. It's a barrier. And to get through all of that without an abrasion or something, that is just remarkable. That is how I have to put it. Yeah, Dr. Paul Wright, the water as well as the um, Italian Anti-Doping Agency have until the 6th of September to decide whether they will appeal. I saw a statement on the BBC from the World Anti-Doping Agency, water that they will take a close look before deciding what they will do, which is, of course, um, normal procedure in a situation like this. How surprised would you be if the World Anti-Doping Agency did not appeal against this ruling? No, that question, no. That is an excellent question, because... Usually, I would be completely surprised if they didn't appeal this, because usually water is on top of these things, because the world and the open. But when you get a statement from water that they allowed a country of international stars who are competing and winning to give them that telling that they are undercover agents and to compete through Olympics 
knowing that they're using drugs and then turn a blind eye. That to me is, is, is when they have some. You ever see a cartoon with Christian signs over the, the man's head, about five little Christian signs? That is me now and Wada. Wada has now got to prove to the rest of the world that it is now it's in an error, that it is now back on where it is supposed to be, which is the looking at athletes who use performance enhancing drugs to get the edge over the other competitors, getting the edge and winning. And all we do now, you, know, you notice that now all we do is take away his prize money and his points. What about the people who he beat? The people who are now denied moving forward in the competition to going on to earn more prize money. This is so unfair that it bothers the mind. Yeah. yeah, and Dr. Wright, of course, a lot of these players have come to the forefront and they have expressed disappointment. One such player is Nick Curious. You know, he said that um, once you test positive for a banned substance twice, it's only normal that you're gone from the sport um, for two years. Another player came out and said, you know, they're starting to think that there are different rules for different players. And to me, my question for you is, what type of example is this setting for one the youngsters that are now getting involved in the sport and just um a bit about the future when you think about this sport for me this is my opinion it has shown what i have known in my 42 years of drug testing long before that i was a member of a group in the american college of sports medicine we used to meet and we heard years ago about what was going on in usada and that group was abandoned. I was a part of another group called Citizens Ambassador Program that went to China to look at their program when a, a, a coach named Ma was producing world records and claimed that he was using a mushroom. So that drug testers have these groups that we meet regularly because we know that it depends on who tests positive, what the action will be. Because let me tell you something, and I can say this without fear of contradiction, there is no country in the world that has any wish for their top athletes to take positive. As what I said, they believe that this would be bring the sport into disrepute if all these tough people keep testing positive. And what it does, it shows the youngsters coming up that if you have connections and if you know how to avoid the system, then you can use these performance enhancers, win medals, and get away with it because it's a test positive. You're going to find the best lawyers, the best people in the whole world coming on your side, looking at the tester to see if it's the tester who did, who, who, who did the sample. If the method was wrong, something must be wrong. Because in my experience and in world experience, it's only one athlete ever test positive and put up his hand. That is me. Mm. Every other athlete who knew, I don't know that drug, where it come from, how it got into my body. And that is, that, that, that is the, the, what we are dealing with as our system. But we have to set the example that sport must be a level playing field. Everybody must use non-enhancing performance substances in order to be, to get the edge. You can use a different training method. You can change your coach. You can change your diet. You can train high and play low. You can do all those things. But there are some things that water changes every October, you know, water changes the list of banned substances because they know that these athletes are two steps ahead of them all the time, but we're just trying to get everybody on the level playing field. Yeah. Dr. Paul, I know that you're never someone who is afraid to speak your mind, so I'm going to ask you this question bluntly because... Um, Sinner has been cleared of wrongdoing by the International Tennis Integrity Agency and also an independent panel. Now, based on what we have on the table facing us, it is hard to trust their, um, their efficiency in, 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 the, in the inquiry that they carried out. Are, are these bodies to be trusted, Dr. Paul? I, my own belief... It depends that it has to do with the evidence that is presented to them at the trial. I have been at several disease trials with these independent tribunals. And what you have to do, what is presented to the tribunal, the tribunal can't run what they don't know. It is what is presented to them. I have been at one of these sessions with independent tribunals. And if you hear the person putting forward the case for the 
for the organization. And if you get the person in the defense, you, you wonder how come this thing reaches stage. Is, I have to point out to the panel that if they just take the substance, the battle that the person is giving you, just blow it up on the screen and look what is written on it. What was written on that bottle is not to be used by athletes, but they have presented this in such a way that this was an ordinary supplement that the people are using for years. And it's just that this one supplement was, was, was tainted, and that is how this person uh, got caught. So you have to have somebody there who understands the system, because even the prosecutors, I call them prosecutors and defense people, when they present the case to the independent tribunal, it is what the tribunal gets in front of them, they, they, they want to know. But somebody has to be there to point out that, look, you're leaving out this or you're adding this. Yeah, but I, so that, I, I, the, the people who are there have to be on the ball and understand drug testing and the methods that athletes use to get the edge. And that is what they're but, looking yeah, at. But, but Every that's athlete the, in the world gets edge. Yeah, but Dr. Paul, that's exactly where I'm going. You're saying that these panels must include people who understand the system well and have the details of uh, what uh, athletes will try to do to trick the system. So I find it very hard to accept that the independent tribunal and the international tennis integrity agency would not have had people of that acumen to address this issue my you know you know what i see on these panels people with credentials in law people with credentials in in science people with credentials in all of this what we need is people who understand drug testing who are on the ground in the drug testing program who are with the athletes on a day-to-day -day basis and understand what is happening in the athletics world. Not somebody who is a high court, a Supreme Court judge, not somebody who has 18 degrees in science, but has never known a, 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 a final race or, or, or played a tennis match. We, we, we need people who are involved in the team at the ground level who are there, who can point out to the panel of experts, because more than one person on this panel, that this is what you need. But what you have are eminent people with thousands of degrees and reputations from here to, to Port Marant and back. Yeah. But the knowledge of what is going on is what is escaping some of these tribunals. Yeah, Dr. Paul, right, we're out of time, but one quick one before we go. Given everything that you know about this case, of course, um, Yannick Sinner, he lost his points from the Indian Wells Tournament and the prize money as well, but no period of ineligibility. Um, what would you recommend as a suitable period of ineligibility, given what you know about this case? Two years. Two years. That is the minimum. Minimum is two years, because he tested positive twice. Mm. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Paul Wright. Always a pleasure speaking okay. with you. Take care. Take care. Good. Back with more on the Sportsbank Zone, including at the track with Lance Whitaker.